Hey guys, Will here. So today's video, we're gonna be talking about steering wheels. We've got pretty much every single steering wheel that Fnatic currently offer in front of us or behind us. And we're gonna be running through every single one of them today to help you decipher which one is going to suit your needs and budget best. Now, there's a couple of different things to go through today. We're gonna to break things down into the three different, I guess, basic ecosystems that exist within the wider Fnatic ecosystem. We did do a video a couple of weeks ago now where we talked about formula style wheels as well. So we're not gonna cover those again today. If you want to check those out, then there is a link down in the description where you can check out that video. Now, because we've got so many wheels to go through today, I'm going to keep this as top level as I possibly can. So if you are looking for more detail on a specific wheel that we're talking about today, chances are we do have a dedicated review video for that particular wheel. So jump on boostedmedia.net. You'll find our product library where we have full detailed reviews of every single product which we've covered here at Boosted Media historically. So let's get started. Okay, now before we get started on the three different, I guess, sub ecosystems that exist within the range, the first thing I want you guys to understand is the difference between what Fnatic designate as a rim versus what they designate as a wheel. And I see people get this wrong quite often, so this is an important thing to understand. So when you're buying a Fnatic wheel, it includes everything that you need to connect it to your wheelbase and get up and driving. When you buy a rim, basically what you're getting is just the rim piece like this. And there's a couple of different options which are available. You're then going to need to get yourself some sort of a universal hub, whether that be the CSL hub, the uh, V2 club spot hub, or the podium hub. You may need to add shifters as well, depending on which hub you're going for. And you'll also need some sort of a quick release mechanism to actually connect it to your wheelbase. So just to reiterate, if you're buying a rim, you're gonna need the shifters, you're gonna need the hub, you're gonna need the quick release. If you're buying a wheel, then it comes with everything that you're gonna need to get up and driving straight out of the box. So let's push ahead now and talk about the three different ecosystems which exist within the wider Fnatic ecosystem. So we have the CSL series, we have the club sport series and the podium series. Now, within reason, those three series are cross compatible. That is to say that if you have a CSL level base, you can use a club sport or a podium wheel. And inversely, if you have a club sport or podium series wheelbase, you can interchange wheels from all three series across and use them on the club sport or podium bases. There is one limitation there though, when it comes to the podium wheel bases. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on when we get into quick releases. So we have the CSL range, we have the club sport range, and then we have the podium range. Now, normally I would refer refer to the CSL range as an entry level, but I did also want to quickly mention that there is now the GT DD Pro wheel, which at this point at least isn't available on its own. That does come bundled with the GT DD Pro. And the reason I'm calling that out specifically is that this is on a quality level, which sits one class lower again than the CSL range. So it's not designated as a CSL wheel. And you'll see when you have a look at it, you can see in our full review of the GT DD Pro, this is, you know, it, while it is a nice solid construction and it does all the things that it really needs to do, for a product of this price point, it is using lower quality materials. It's using rubber and plastic rather than metal anywhere throughout the construction. You know, you've got spring loaded shifters rather than magnetic and bits and pieces like that. So from here on in the video where we refer to the CSL range as the entry level, just remember that there is this wheel also which sits below that level in terms of build quality and materials. So just want to make sure that was clear. But from here on in, we'll be referring to the CSL range as the entry level from Fnatic. And then we'll move on into the mid level, which is club sport, and then the premium level, which is our podium wheels at the top here. So you now understand the difference between a wheel and a rim. You understand that there are three different sub ecosystems within the wider Fnatic ecosystem. Next thing to understand is the difference between a all in one single piece wheel, like what we have here with the WRC. And there is also a BMW version of this wheel too. And a, I guess, modular wheel, like what we have here with the flat two. So in this case, what we have is a rim, we've got a hub, and then we've got a quick release on the back here. And this purely will just depend on the type of wheel that you're buying. So you can tell by looking at the image, whether it looks kind of like a single piece or whether it looks like it's made up of various different modules. Now, if you are buying a modular wheel like this, it will come disassembled. So you'll get a box or you'll get individual boxes in most cases actually for each of the components, and then you'll need to assemble it yourself. Now, assembly is relatively easy. And again, if you want to see how to do that, check out our dedicated review video on each of the various different wheels which we're looking at today. And that will give you everything you need to know to put it together with complete confidence. It's not difficult at all to do, but just something that you do need to be prepared to need to do when you receive it. And they do include all the tools that you're gonna to need to assemble these as well. 
So in the case of a CSL series modular wheel, like what we have here, will generally come packaged as two pieces. So the rim and then the hub, which includes the shifters if you're getting the CSL hub, and then but depending on whether or not you order the metal quick release, that'll come separately too. So in this case, you can see we do have a metal quick release installed. So all the CSL series wheels will come by default with the glass infused plastic simplified quick release. And as I've said before, you can upgrade those with the club sport metal quick release should you wish to do so. So you may have seen by now in a number of the Fnatic wheel base reviews that we've done, we have talked about that little bit of flex that exists between the shaft or the stem on the wheelbase itself and the sleeve for the metal quick release. And basically what that is, is it's a little bit of a gap here between the sleeve and the, uh, and the shaft on the other end. So you can imagine when they're manufacturing these, there is a little bit of tolerance there just to allow the wheel to slip on easily and not sort of bind up and grip up. And anytime you have a little bit of tolerance there, a little bit of variation, it's gonna allow for a little bit of flex there. And you can see there are some little metal ball bearings in there, which kind of pinch into place or cinch into place and, uh, and hold that in position. But there is always a little tiny bit of flex there. And we'll overlay some footage here so you can see at least in our experience what that's like. And look, there are, you know, there is, there is varying degrees of movement there. Some people will say they have absolutely zero flex. Some people will say they have, you know, unacceptably large amounts of flex. And what it basically just boils down to is if you happen to get a wheel that has you know, on the, on the larger side and you happen to get a stem on your wheelbase, which is on the skinnier side, then obviously you're gonna have a little bit more play. Now, because of the way this works, it slides on and then whatever flex you have is whatever flex you have and it's basically as simple as that. But the flex is taking place, as I said, between the shaft and the sleeve itself. Now, in the case of the plastic quick release, what this does is it actually screws on and pinches down. So you can see as we screw this collar in, there's kind of little fingers, little plastic fingers there that grip in or squeeze in. And that's what creates the, I guess, the bind between the shaft and the quick release. So because we're able to tighten that up, we're able to take up any of that slack mechanically, unlike what we have with the metal quick release. But because this is glass infused plastic, we do still get a bit of flex between the mounting point here and the actual back plate of the wheel itself. So instead of the wheel kind of flexing around on the stem, we get a little bit of flex in the back here anyway. And in my experience, the amount of flex you get with a simplified quick release is about the same overall as what you get with the metal quick release. There are a couple of other reasons why you might wanna look at upgrading. What I've generally been recommending is that people don't upgrade to the metal quick release immediately. So see how you go with the simplified. And then if you feel the need to upgrade to the club sport metal quick release later on down the track, then you do have the option to do so. Now, the one exception to that, which is really important to take note of is that in the case of the CSL hub and the McLaren wheel, you don't get access to full torque mode on the DD1 and DD2 unless you do upgrade to that metal quick release. Now, if we have a look at a simplified quick release, which we've taken off here, you can see there's this little plastic arm here. What that does is it pushes a little button internally on the wheel, and that basically tells the wheel to disable full torque mode on the DD1 and the DD2. Now you can shave that off and trick the wheel into allowing you to use the full torque, but I wouldn't recommend doing so because you're pretty much guaranteed to crack the plastic and end up not being able to drive at all. So don't recommend doing that. So if you do want to use a CSL hub-based wheel or the McLaren wheel on your DD1 or DD2 and have the access to full torque, then you will need to upgrade to that metal quick release. Now another important thing to note here is that although the WRC and BMW wheels do still have that same removable quick release, those don't give you access to full torque. So if you do purchase a WRC or a BMW wheel, you're not gonna have access to full torque mode on the DD1 or DD2. Not a problem on the current uh, club sport wheelbases or the CSL DD or GT DD Pro. None of those have a low torque mode, but DD1 and DD2, you will be limited to low torque. So just be aware of that. So let's elaborate a little further on the CSL range now, and then we'll move on into club sport and podium wheels a little later on. So starting off with the WRC wheel, remember again, there is a BMW equivalent of this available too. So both the WRC and BMW variant are a really great one size fits all kind of entry level into the Fnatic ecosystem. So round design means that you can do things like drifting, you can do things like rally style, you're able to slip the wheel through your hands comfortably without it bouncing around. That is something that is particularly important when it comes to drifting. So something that I'm really glad to see in these designs.
designs. And you know, these are basically designed as a, you know, if you can only afford one wheel, then this is gonna enable you to do pretty much everything that you need to do. Because of the 300 millimeter diameter and the nice light weight to it, it does have a nice sensitive feel to it as well. So it's perfectly fine for driving formula style cars as well. So if you wanted to play something like F1 2021, for example, you're gonna be absolutely fine using this wheel. Limitations here, of course, are you don't have things like thumb encoders, you don't have rotary encoders available everywhere, you don't have quite so many assignable buttons. You get relatively good feeling shifters here. I was actually pretty impressed with the way these feel. These use what they call snap dome technology. So it's basically a plastic spring inside there, which springs it back into position, but it does have a nice positive click to it. And if you wanna learn more about the specifics of that wheel, check out our full detailed review. So then we move up to the CSL hub. Now this one is a really interesting one. We did a very long and detailed review where we deep dived into every single little aspect of the CSL hub. But basically to give you the long and the short of it, we were overall pretty impressed with it. We felt like it was a relatively, you know, relatively acceptable price point for what it gave you. Obviously it gives you access to a wide variety of different rooms which you can put on here. This is just a flat two room which we've got on here as example, but you could change this out for any one of the other rims as we talked about before in the Fnatic ecosystem as well as any other aftermarket rim too. So you've got the option of a 3.50 millimeter stud pattern here or a 6.70 millimeter stud pattern. So pretty much universal sizing there to mount any wheel that you want. You can see up the top here, we do have a funky switch. We've got a rocker switch here. We've got a couple of toggle switches up the top too. Then a variety of other push buttons too. You can see we've got a standard three digit seven segment display here for displaying telemetry, as well as access to our tuning menu. And if you wanna understand more details about how the tuning menu works, there's a link down in the description for that as well. Uh, and then if we flip it around, you can see we do actually have the metal quick release installed on this guy by default, of course, it would come with the simplified quick releases we looked at before. The issue with this wheel is the shifters. They are really not very good. And uh, I, was, I was surprised at just how bad they are considering the rest of the design is actually pretty good. Now we do have the option here, if we undo the screws here to slide these shifters in and out or slide the entire assembly in and out in fact. So that does accommodate for wheels up to about 320 millimeter. Once you go larger than that, it starts to become a little bit difficult to reach these shifters. Now the shifters themselves feel okay if you pull them in the middle, but you'll notice here, if we pull at the bottom or the top, there's a ton of flex there. You can see just how much that's rocking from side to side. It just has a really nasty plasticky feel to it. And the reason I'm being so harsh on the shifters is simply because they aren't as good as the shifters that you get on a Logitech G27. I mean, obviously it is subjective to a point, but when you have that much flex there, it's just not good. So be aware of that. If you are getting the CSL hub overall, it is a well-priced and you know good gateway into the wider ecosystem. Obviously, as I said before, it allows you to mount a variety of different rims and get them up and running with everything you need to get up and driving. But yeah, those shifters are just a real weak point in the design. But I guess a good reason to maybe look at upgrading to something like the Club Sport Universal Hub, which we're gonna look at in just a moment. So that is the, I guess, quick rundown on the CSL Hub. And again, check out the full detailed review where we went through everything objectively to show you how we reached that subjective opinion. So we move on from that now to what I think is the best bang for buck wheel within the entire Fnatic range. And that is the CSL Elite Steering Wheel McLaren GT3 V2. I think I got that right, is that right? Yep. Excellent, okay. So there's a couple of reasons why I love this wheel and we actually included this in our formula style review just recently as well. Of course, we do have a detailed video on this wheel specifically too. So definitely check that out if you are looking to pick one of these up. That goes into all the fine details which we're gonna gloss over in today's video. But look, the reason why I love this wheel is because it's just so versatile. It's nice and light once again, 300 millimeter diameter. So it's perfect for driving any sort of GT3, GT4 or formula style car. Obviously you're not gonna be drifting or doing rally or anything like that, but you know you don't expect to be doing those kinds of things if you buy a wheel like this anyway. So between this guy and this guy, you've pretty much got absolutely everything you're ever gonna need, at least at an entry level, before you start to move up into your DD1, DD2 stronger style wheelbase territories. But in fact, in saying that, if you have a metal quick release on this wheel like what we have here, again with the Club Sport quick release upgrade, then this is perfectly fine. In fact, Tom actually runs this as his daily driver wheel on his DD1 and has been doing so ever since the day that this was released and absolutely 
absolutely loves it. So other things I really like about this wheel, it has the OLED display here rather than the seven segment. So that gives you slightly more versatility in terms of how telemetry is displayed and slightly, I guess, more accessibility in terms of the tuning menu as well, because you can actually see on the screen exactly what you're adjusting rather than having to rely on acronyms as you get with the seven segment display. So a bit of an upgrade there. You've got your seven way funky switch here. You've got protected buttons for functions that you don't want to knock by accident. You've got toggle switches. You've got rotary encoders or multi-position switches up the top here. You've got another one here as well for adjusting different clutch modes. And we'll look at that in just a moment. You've got a nice sort of rocker style magnetic shifter here too. Now it's not the best feeling shifter in the range by any means, doesn't compare anywhere close to the magnetic shifters that you get with the V2 club sport wheels or the podium wheels of course, but for what it is, and again considering the price point, it does feel very good. It also allows you to do a push-pull style shift should you wish to do so, although I don't know too many people that use it that way. And overall, it's just a really, really well-priced wheel for what it gives you. And it kind of makes some of the other wheels in the Fnatic range not look like very good value by comparison, to be honest. So I was actually surprised when they released the V2 that it wasn't a lot more expensive than the V1 had been previously. But yeah, it is what it is. Nice rubber grips as well. Those have stood the test of time really well. Wear and tear wise, this wheel has been absolutely fantastic. As I mentioned before, Tom's been using this as his daily driver wheel for, I wanna say the better part of a year now, if not longer. And uh, well, since the day this wheel was released and yeah, absolutely no real signs of wear and tear whatsoever on it. So it's been really nice, really reliable and just a really great overall all rounder GT style racing wheel. The other thing you get here as well is two analog paddles on the back here and those can be assigned via the multi-position switch here to be either a clutch and handbrake, a throttle and brake, or a bite point clutch or two stage clutch. So what that means is you can set a calibration point, you can have, so you release one hand, it gets you to the engagement point, so you start moving, and then you can release the other hand to get underway. So again, more details on that if you check out the full review, but definitely what I would say is the best value for money wheel within the entire Fnatic ecosystem. So just quickly recapping on the CSL Elite range, we've got the WRC or BMW wheel, which comes as a basic all-in-one type system. You can upgrade these to the metal quick release should you wish to do so, although not really necessary on the WRC or the BMW wheel, simply because you don't unlock that full torque mode on the DD1 and DD2 with these wheels anyway. But look, really great all around versatile wheel that's gonna get you up and running for pretty much any type of style driving that you can think of. Then we've got the CSL hub, which again does come with a simplified quick release rather than metal. Can upgrade it as you can see we've done here. A good overall entry level into more versatility allows you to mount pretty much any rim that you can imagine on here up to about 320 millimeters down to 280 millimeters with ease, but does have the disadvantage of what I think are substandard shifter paddles here. And I really do hope we do see a V2 of this, which improves that because everything else about it is pretty darn good. But yeah, those shifters just really aren't very good. Again, in my personal opinion. And then we have the CSL Elite McLaren GT3 wheel, which again, as I said before, is just a really great outstanding wheel for the price point. It does everything you want it to do. And really the only thing that you wouldn't want to do with this wheel is really just kind of rally drifting and things like that where you need to sort of have that round wheel. Otherwise, it pretty much is a one size fits all wheel that most people are going to be happy with for most purposes. So let's take a look now at the Club Sport range, which sits in the middle of the Fnatic ecosystem. So it's a decent jump up in terms of both price and quality from the CSL Elite series and a jump down from the podium range. Now, just like what we had with the CSL Elite range, there are two different styles of rims available here. So we've got our all-in-one style rims like the RS and BMW wheel in front of us here. Those come with everything you need out of the box and do come pre-assembled. And then we have our modular style wheels like what we have here. This is the uh, classic rim, which we've got attached here and you can see they've got a universal hub here. We don't actually have the rotary encoder installed on this wheel, but you can see it installed on the V1 over here. And we'll talk about V1 and V2 differences in just a second. But you can see this is a more modular design. So we've got the rim, which you purchase separately. We've got the universal hub here. And then on the back, you can see this comes with the metal quick release. So within the club sport range, at least at the time of making this video, all of the hubs and all of the wheels do come with the metal style quick release. You're not gonna have to worry about the plastic simplified quick release. That is a CSL Elite thing. And we do have the option of upgrading these to the QR2 quick release when that gets released, hopefully before too long. I don't have any details on that. It's something that Fnatic have been talking about for a long time, but haven't really shared much more detail on it. But we'll talk about that in just a moment too. So the one thing that I did wanna point 
point out here is that we do still have some ability to upgrade here. So these are still modular to a certain point. If we flip these around, you can see the new V2 wheels actually come with the Club Sport magnetic paddle module, which we did a standalone review on a while back now. And that is a really, really significant upgrade from what we had on the V1 style rims, which you can see, oh, that's rolling to the side. These just had a basic micro switch and spring-loaded mechanism. And you can see just how kind of sloppy and cheap that is by comparison to the beautiful magnetic paddle shifter. So that is a really, really significant upgrade from the V1 rims. And you can see here what we have is the RS rim, which is the replacement for the Porsche RSR rim. And then we have the BMW V2 rim, which looks exactly the same as the V1, but obviously has the addition of those magnetic paddle shifters. Now there are a couple of other important differences between V1 and V2. So I want to quickly run you through those now. V V1 wheels are no longer available in the European or US regions. You can still buy them, I believe, in Australia, but I know a lot of people might be looking at picking up one of these secondhand. So I wanted to explain the differences between V1 and V2 here, just so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into if you are buying a V1. So we've already talked about the differences in the shifters between the magnetic and the spring-loaded micro switch style, and that is a very very significant upgrade. Other important differences are the firmware is now upgradable on the V2 rims. Not that that necessarily means anything. I haven't seen anything significant in terms of new features being brought to the table in these rims. But a couple of other important things to note in terms of hardware is if you remember on the older V1 style rims, these actually had little vibration motors for haptic feedback inside the wheel itself. So you actually felt a little bit of vibration. You could be assigned to things like, you know, braking force so you could feel the car lock up through your hands if you were hitting ABS or you could have it assigned to engine vibration, things like that if you wish to do so. The V2 rims no longer have that feature. So that is one thing that is important to take note of. For me personally, I never really found it to be significant. I actually had somebody ask me a while back when I moved from the Fnatic ecosystem across to Simicube for my main daily driver rig, had somebody ask, do I miss that vibration? And I actually had to think twice about it and go, oh yeah, that's right, it used to vibrate, didn't it? So for me personally, I never really found it to be particularly advantageous but you know other people may disagree with that it is a purely subjective thing so it is important to note that you get that vibration with the BMW and Porsche V1 wheels you don't get it with the V2 wheels now there is one other really important difference between V1 and V2 here which I wanted to cover for you guys now it isn't massively significant at the point in time where we're making this video simply because that QR2 which we mentioned before hasn't been released yet when that does get released this will become a lot more important so as we talked about before there is that little bit of flex between between the stem and the sleeve on the current quick release system as it stands with the Club Sport Metal quick release. And that is the same quick release you get on the podium wheels, which we'll look at in just a moment too. Now, when that QR2 comes out, that should completely eliminate any flex in the quick release system. So I'm sure a lot of people, obviously, depending on the price, and I don't have any information on that yet, unfortunately, will be looking at upgrading to that QR2. Now, if we flip around, Let's start off with the let's start off with the universal hubs here. So if we flip around a V1 universal hub, you can see that quick release is connected directly through there. So there's no ability to change that out for any other style quick release. It doesn't have those bolts around the outside. Now if we hold up a V2, you can see this one has the interchangeable quick release on the back here. So we got the little holes that we can see around here. We simply unbolt that quick release and swap it out for the QR2 quick release when we wish to do so. And it's exactly the same across the uh, the RS and the Porsche RSR wheel too. So you can see other than just the differences in the logo there, again, you can see the quick release is interchangeable on the V2, not interchangeable on the V1. And you guessed it, even though the BMW wheels look almost identical on the front, we've got completely different shifters on the back as we talked about before, and of course the ability to change out our quick release on the V2, but not on the V1. So just to quickly recap for you again, we don't get the vibration motors on the V2s, but we did have them on the V1. So if that's something that's important to you, you might wanna look at trying to pick up a V1. We do get the Club Sport magnetic paddle module, which I think is a very significant upgrade on the V2s. The paddles on the V1 Club Sport range really were the weak point, I think. They just didn't have that nice feel to them. Now there are some aftermarket magnetic paddle upgrades available. We did review one of those a number of years ago now for the BMW wheel. So you do have that option. It's a lot cheaper than 
obviously upgrading. So I would definitely recommend go watch our review on that Club Sport Magnetic Paddle Module and that'll let you know in more detail exactly what the differences are there. But I guess the important point there is it is absolutely something that you'll appreciate every single time you drive with a V2 wheel in comparison to a V1. And then the other differences there, as we said, are just the ability to change over to that QR2 when that releases on the V2 wheels, whereas you don't get that ability on the V1s. So as we mentioned before, We've got our all-in-one style wheels, which come with everything you need out of the box. You can upgrade these to the Podium Advanced Paddle Module should you wish to do so down the track. And we're gonna take a look at that in just a minute with the Podium range. So all-in-one, everything you need out of the box. And then you do have the option to purchase the Club Sport Universal Hub. That gives you full functionality, comes with the metal quick release out of the box, and you can install any rim that you want from the Fnatic range, as well as a myriad of aftermarket rims too. And again, you have that 50 millimeter stud pattern, as well as a 70 millimeter stud pattern, so you can pretty much mount any wheel. And all of these individual button components here are all movable, so you can move them around into the correct position to suit pretty much any wheel. And I haven't actually come across a wheel which I wasn't able to install on one of these as yet. So plenty of different options available there. You can see this is the classic two 350 millimeter style wheel. This is good for things like drifting or just kind of classic street cars. We have the option of something like a deep dish wheel. Look what we have with the NASCAR wheel here. This is good if you don't want to have your fingers snag on buttons and things like that as you're slipping it through your hands or just because it's kind of authentic to the NASCAR experience. And again, you can have a look at their website to see all the various different rims. And all of those are compatible with the CSL hub that we looked at earlier, the Club Sport Universal hub, and of course the Podium hub. So sitting at the top of the Fnatic ecosystem is the Podium range. Now this is a range that hasn't expanded as quickly as I expected it might. Now one thing that's obviously missing from it is uh, podium pedals and that's something that I'm hoping we might have some news on soon. I genuinely don't know anything about their plans there but at the moment as it stands we have two wheels that are available there in terms of things that you can just buy off the shelf and then there's a bunch of different configurations which are available. Now we only actually have one of the off the shelf ones here that is the Porsche 911 GT3 wheel. Again we do have a standalone review of this wheel where we went through all the details. There is the new M4 GT3 wheel available too. That is another tier again up from the quality of this. As you guys might know, that uses CAN bus rather than the standard electronics. Uh, and it is extremely expensive. It's also the same exact wheel that they use in the real life race car, which is pretty cool, but not necessarily something that actually advantages sim races. But what we have here is the Porsche 11 GT3 rim, as I mentioned. And then we have the same basic configuration, but with an R300 wheel in leather. And this is actually my favorite Fnatic wheel as it stands right now, simply because it gives you all the quality and everything that you would expect from the Porsche wheel, but also the versatility of a 300 millimeter diameter. But before we get into that, let's just have a quick look at the componentry that goes into these. So I believe the M4 GT3 wheel will come as an out of the box, uh, no need for any assembly style wheel, but we'll confirm that once we get our hands on one. The Porsche 911 GT3 wheel, however, is modular. So you can see here, we have the 911 rim. We've got the button module endurance, which can be purchased separately. You flip it around, we have the advanced paddle module, which you can see includes the extra triggers, which we mentioned before, as well as the analog paddles. And again, we do have standalone review videos on each one of these individual components. If you're interested, uh, we'll put some links down in the description or check out boostedmedia.net. And then in the back here, you can see the podium hub. So this essentially creates the joint between your wheelbase and whatever button plate and wheel you choose to use. Now, the reason why I say whatever button plate you choose to use is one thing that's really interesting about the Podium Hub is that it doesn't have any way of accessing the tuning menu, uh, which is what you obviously need to be able to access to be able to fine tune any of your settings from the wheel without having to go into the tuning menu through the driver software. No way of accessing that menu on the hub itself. So you will need a button plate, such as the button module endurance, to access that tuning menu. And at the point of making this video, there isn't any other cheaper button modules available which give you access to that tuning menu through the uh, through the Podium Hub. So something to be aware of there. Although it does look really nice, it's got the you know beautiful gold anodizing there, and you know all those nice things. In terms of core functionality, it's actually not as good as the Club Sport Universal Hub or the Xbox Hub. You can see this one has a couple of buttons on the top here for accessing tuning menu presets and a little seven segment three digit display 
sitting there too. So something to be aware of there. This does have a button cluster pack, which you can purchase for it, but again, doesn't give you access to the tuning menu. So the only option you have there is to install the button plate. Now you do have the option of running the Club Sport magnetic paddle module with the Podium Hub. If you don't want these extra analog paddles or extra triggers, that is a great way of saving a little bit of money. But otherwise the Podium Hub is basically just an interface between whatever rim you want to install on it with a 70 or a 50 millimeter stud pattern and the wheelbase. Now, a question that does come up quite regularly is can you connect a rim and a quick release together and skip the hub and the button plate and the shifters all together if you just want to run a rim on the wheelbase with no other electronics or buttons or anything like that? Unfortunately, the answer is no. There are some third party options to get around that. We might do a separate video exploring that later on, but the way Fnatic works is there are some electronics inside the hubs themselves, whether it's the Podium Hub, the Universal Club Sport Hub, or the CSL Hub, and that actually enables force feedback on the wheelbase. So if it doesn't detect the presence of the electronics inside the hub, you won't have any force feedback and you obviously won't be able to drive properly. So other than the obvious mechanical difference here with the stud pattern not matching up with the face of the wheel, even if you were to drill holes to mount this directly to your rim, you're not gonna be able to have any force feedback. So that answers that question. But otherwise there are a couple of other options available for the Porsche wheel. Comes in a leather or Alcantara version as you see here. You can also buy a club sport version of this, which comes with the same rim, the same button module, but comes with the magnetic paddle module rather than the advanced paddle module and of course the universal hub rather than the podium hub. And that is significantly cheaper than the podium version, but for all intents and purposes does operate pretty much the same way now that that V2 hub comes with those magnetic paddles. So the only thing you're really missing out on is just the analog paddles as well as those additional triggers, which again, as I said before, for me, I don't find particularly useful anyway. So if I were buying one, I probably would actually go for the Club Sport V2 version rather than the V1 version. Previously, I wouldn't have because you'd be limited to those horrible spring loaded micro switch shifters, but now that they've upgraded it to that magnetic paddle module, it does definitely make a lot more sense to look at the club sport version of this wheel rather than the podium version. But otherwise the material quality, the carbon fiber and everything else is the same. Now the other advantage with the button module endurance here is you do get the larger display here as well as the flag LEDs. So that gives you a deeper level access to telemetry and things like that. But again, check out our full review on the Porsche 911 wheel for more details on that. So as I mentioned before, the R3 300 version of this is my favorite Fnatic wheel in the ecosystem because it's just a little bit more versatile being 300 millimeter diameter rather than 320. 320 is a little bit weird for driving formula style cars. It just starts to feel a little bit too vague. Obviously the larger the diameter, the more dampening effect you get and the less sensitivity you get. So this is by far the more versatile of the two options. And of course, again, as we said before, you can swap this out for any other rim that you wanted. So you could even put a classic rim on it if you wanted to, but obviously you do need to be mindful of the footprint of the button module endurance if you are looking at mounting other rims. So just check compatibility on the Fnatic website for that. But again, because this is completely modular, because you can buy each of these components separately, you can mix and match and choose whatever you want to get the functionality you want at the price point which is gonna suit you. And I think that pretty much covers everything we need to in terms of the three ecosystems. So there is a clear step up in quality between all three of them. If you compare something like the R300 there to something like the WRC wheel, obviously way, 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 way more expensive, but you can see they don't look like they're from the same brand. This is all carbon fiber, aluminum, beautiful leather here. Although the Alcantara is quite nice, on the WRC wheel, you can see just overall the build quality is nowhere near as nice. So not all Fnatic products are exactly the same as each other. Obviously it does depend on what you spend. You are getting what you pay for, but to give you a clear side-by-side -side comparison, one of the cheaper products and one of the more expensive products, notwithstanding the M4 GT3 wheel, which is just next level once over again. So I really hope that this video has helped you understand a little bit more about the Fnatic ecosystem. Again, if you are interested in the formula style wheels, we did a separate video where we took a look at that. And if you're wanting more details on any of the things that we've looked at specifically, as I've mentioned a few times, we do have dedicated review videos for most of the stuff that we looked at today. Hit up boostedmedia.net for all the detail on that. And if you do wanna pick up any of the wheels that we've looked at today, there are some Fnatic affiliate links down in the description. That is a great way of helping out the work that we do here at Boosted Media at no additional cost to you guys. So we really do appreciate your support there. But above all, thank you very much for watching the video. Share it with your mates if you found it helpful. Leave a thumbs up and we will see you again soon. Bye.